Well, I'm sure you all already heard the news. Nintendo is shutting down the 3DS and Wii U eShops. That means that a lot of games and DLC won't be available through legal means anymore. It's tragic, but that's a consequence of the day and age we live in. I personally get that to some degree, but something hit me different because I realized, damn, it really is the end of an era. These two consoles, regardless of their ups and downs, were a huge part of my life, especially the 3DS. So I want to make a tribute for both of them. If we're gonna close this cycle, might as well go out with a bang. So, what does the 3DS mean for me? If we're going to sum up the 3DS, we shall call it... Everyone thought it was gonna fail, but I ended up being a huge success. The console. And how can we not? Back then, when the 3DS was first announced, I was still very young, 12 years old to be exact. It was an era when I was just dipping my toes into online communities. And something I vividly remember is that the 3DS wasn't leaving a strong impact. Say, when consoles like the Wii or the DS were close to release, they were super talked about. Even when I was 6, 8 years old at the time, I still knew these consoles were a huge thing, cause everyone from gaming magazines, to what little I knew of the internet, to even my 400 primos and primas, Latino families. They were all talking about them. Some of my cousins even owned and loved their own consoles. But that was never the case with the 3DS. For me, it felt like it was another dumb upgrade, like the DSi. Even though that console was comfy as shit. And the titular 3D gimmick didn't seem that appealing to me. And here's where it gets weird, because even though I didn't think much of it, I still wanted a 3DS. I don't know why, I just wanted one. So I saved money through all of 2011, and finally, on December 26, a day after Christmas, I got my own console with my own money. And I still had enough change to get any game I wanted. So what did I pick? Pokemon White, an non-exclusive 3DS game. But that's okay, because my mother told me, Okay, son, I will give you any game you want. So what did I choose? Ocarina of Time 3D. The remake of a game I had played twice already. I am not the smartest consumer out there. But in all fairness, I did enjoy those picks. Pokemon Black and White ended up becoming my favorites in the entire series, and Ocarina of Time is a timeless classic I can replay any day. And I even got a kick out of those AR Cards minigames, and even Face Raiders, my friends from school loved playing it, simply because it was so stupid and fun. Something that truly defined my early 3DS days was the eShop. You guys have no idea how many times I will enter. I love watching the trailers, Pikmin 2 for the Wii, Luigi's Mansion 2, holy shit I need to get them, downloading a ton of demos cause I couldn't afford games, except for Donkey Kong for the Game Boy. That's a really good game, like, really damn good. Nintendo Video, Pokedex 3D, Swap Note, I only care for them because they were free. Swap note ended up being something that I use a lot. When I look back at all the letters I sent and received, it was a lot of fun, teenage innocence. That's what I would like to say, because it was around that time when I made my Captain Molimore page and started delving deeper and deeper into the internet. The beginning of the end, you could say. This got me involved with a ton of people whose real intentions were hard to know, and sure, while I ended up meeting some genuine friends I still get along with, I was not immune to creeps who sent me some genuinely disturbing shit in Swapnor of all things. It's no wonder they restricted the app sometime later. One of the 3DS's most important features was Street Pass. It was a mechanic where you could close your 3DS, walk around, and if you found more people who were doing the same, you could exchange data and that was useful for some games. And that mechanic was defining for me, because I live in one of Mexico's smallest cities, so it was very hard to find more people with a 3DS so I could street pass them. But that was an era when I was starting to explore and knowing myself better. That eventually led me to the Freaky Plaza, but let's just call it the Weibo Plaza, cause that's what it was. And there, I went to those places because I wanted to street pass more people, but also because I wanted to get into Pokemon TCG. And that basically unleashed a chain of events that led me to meet a lot of people that nowadays I consider my best friends. And it was so fun, because I will go to the Weibo Plaza and I could play TCG, see my friends again as well as make new ones, and even play those Street Pass minigames. And 
it was one of my favorite days because I could get 10 people who will help me to get stamps and help me defeat the Dark Lord in Find Me. It was so incredibly fun. The weekends were easily the peak of my teenage years because on Fridays I will go out with my friends from school, but on Saturdays it was a whole different world in the Weibo Plaza and I liked that. And the 3DS was a huge part of that. And speaking of, does anybody else remember Nintendo Zone? It was an app that would connect to certain hotspots and provide a variety of services. In Mexico, these hotspots were non-existent, and the only time I got the app to work was when I visited the United States. Looking back at it, it wasn't a very good app, especially with smartphones gaining more traction back then. But at least, I guess it was ambitious? I don't know. But if someone got some use out of it, let me know in the comments. At best, I just remember watching some Pokemon episodes on a Starbucks. So that's about it for the main features. I mean, the 3D slider was there, but that was mostly a gimmick. It's no wonder they made the 2DS down the road. Anyway, I find it so surprising how much I got out of the basic stuff, because that's still nothing compared to the actual games. If we look at my 3DS stats, 2,239 hours and over a hundred games? Fuck, I really milked the shit out of this system. I find it so surprising, I played mostly RPGs, considering the console was mostly known for its overabundance of platformers. But what I liked the most is that it gave me new games in franchises I already liked, but also introduced me to new ones. Kid Icarus Cock Rising I call it that because that game was my first huge obsession with the 3DS. I thought it looked cool from trailers alone, and when I saw it came on a bigger than average box I was like... I need that shit. This game was a marvel to me. It was so different, hilarious, fun, challenging and rewarding. I couldn't compare it to anything else. I mean, you could say the flight sections were like Star Fox, but here, the variety of weapons offers so many fun gameplay styles and replay value. I love this game so much that I even remember I would get mad if someone told me they didn't like it. Nowadays I get it, because the control scheme isn't very... good. And dare I say that some of the dialogue didn't age well? I think it can get pretty annoying at times. But... Kiddy Cross Uprising is a game I still hold in high regards, and I can't recommend it enough. It's hard to get into it, but it's so worth it. And now that I mention it, do you guys remember the 3D classics? They were incredible! It allowed you to play the most definitive version of Kirby's Adventure. But since I was so obsessed with uprising, I ended up getting Kid Icarus 3D. I can't believe Nintendo didn't make a ton more of these games. I mean, sure, the virtual console was fine, but the extra polish these versions had made these games way more enjoyable. Throughout the whole 3DS era, there were a ton of titles I was genuinely excited for, and I can confidently say that most of them delivered in spades. But there was one that disappointed me so hard that at some point it became my most hated video game of all time. Yes, even before Fire Emblem Fates took the throne of shame. So where was I? Oh yeah, fuck Paper Mario Sticker Star! Strip everything I like about a series, implement an endless barrage of stupid gimmicks, deprive it from any charm, and make it the most boring, tedious, and cryptic adventure of all time! Sticker Star was a game I couldn't believe was so bad that I spent months trying to convince me that wasn't the case. But no, I realized that was a fruitless battle. So for three years this game will go on to become my personal punching bag. My favorite part was when I sold it to some guy who was excited to play it, and a few days later he was already selling it. So I implied he hated it as much as me. That's Paper Mario Sticker Star everyone, or as I used to say back then, fuck this game. As for other titles worth mentioning, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon was something I was very excited for. The game was fun. Not better than the first one, mind you, but it was worth a wait, and even more! Dark Moon is the main reason I got the very rare Bogtai games, completing box. but that's a story for another shelf stories. The 3DS was also my introduction to the Kingdom Hearts series, with the absolute worst game to start with, Dream Drop Distance. I mean, gameplay-wise it was extremely fun, and it left me wanting to play more of a franchise. But the story was a fucking disaster, and yeah, we all know the plot of Kingdom Hearts is fucking stupid. But Dream Drop Distance knew no limits. There just came a point where I was like... 
Mario and Luigi Dream Team, an incredible sequel to one of my favorite RPGs of all time. Almost on the same level, I'll say. I really love this game, because it was the year of Luigi and Dream Team did a wonderful job to give the green guy some well-deserved protagonism outside of Mansion. The Legend of Zelda, a link between words. A game that felt both classic and fresh at the same time, bringing a ton of unique ideas as well as fun gimmicks and puzzles. One I don't see being talked about very often, and I wonder why, cause it's incredibly good. Maybe it's because 3D Zeldas usually get most of the spotlight? It could be, I don't know. The Kirby Platformers. Triple Deluxe had me so fixated on it, I went on to 100% it. Beating the true arena for the first time is a moment I will treasure forever. And the final boss theme with Sectonia? Oof, one of my favorite tracks in the whole series. Planet Robobot was also a great time, but I never went as hard with it as I did with Triple Deluxe. But someday I'd love to go back and get everything I missed. Especially because that mech was a really great gimmick, I liked it. In fact, I had a huge obsession with Kirby at the time, I even buffed DDD's Drum Dash Deluxe. I remember there were more Kirby minigame expansions, but the rhythm one simply won me over. Now, for the next game, Super Smash Bros. is something that I was incredibly crazy for. But I will save my comments for the Wii U video, since that's where the real deal of the game was for me. But I'll just say, Smash Wrong was superior to Smash Tour. The latter fucking sucked. And do you remember when Nintendo gave demos of the game to some people and they started to sell them online? That's definitely a thing that totally happened. Tomodachi Life was also an interesting title. I remember getting it because Nintendo made a direct about it that was the most hilarious shit ever. And sure, the game was pretty funny, but unfortunately it was way too repetitive and the charm ran out fast. But credit where it's due, they really knew how to sell this game with that direct. I'm serious, look it up, it's hilarious. Bill, Bill, no sleeping on the job. Ah! <laughs> WarioWare Gold made me so happy with its release. It was a joy seeing the series return to what it does best while applying as many gameplay styles as possible, easily making it the best in the series. That's what I will say if Smooth Moves didn't tie with it, but still, Gold is just as good. One game that defined a period of time for me was Animal Crossing New Leaf. The summer of 2013 is one I will remember forever, because that's when I made a bunch of great online friends around my age. And I clearly remember having all these Skype calls while we will play New Leaf. Every morning I will wake up to get new clothes, furniture and those fortune cookies that gave you Nintendo stuff. And at night I will go to sleep late because my friends and I will go to catch rare bugs in Tortimer's Island. That was easily one of the best summers I experienced my whole life, and I'm glad New Leaf made it possible. Bravely Default Technically my first Final Fantasy experience, and one I fucking adored. It delivered a great story, a fast-paced combat system that required a ton of strategy, as well as a wonderful job system that added so much variety. Only bad thing about it is that the final portions of the game fucking suck. I won't spoil anything, but if you know, you know. Also, before making this video, a friend of mine told me, mention Bravely Second at least once, please I beg. Well, I'm doing it just for him. I never played Bravely Second. I don't know why, I love the first game so much, I don't know why I still haven't played the sequel. Maybe I shall fix that before I die. Shin Megami Tensei 4 was a fucking masterpiece. I remember really wanting to play this game when it released. Unfortunately, that wouldn't become a reality until 4 years later. But once I got my hands on it, I couldn't drop it. The combat system was so fast, the difficulty was such that it actually made me think. The story and the characters were so interesting, and the music was immaculate. If there's a Megaten game you absolutely have to play is this one. It's excellent for newcomers, and overall an incredible experience. A personal favorite of mine was Spongebob's Atlantis Corpantis. Eh? Wink wink, you catch my drift? My favorite part about that game is when you unlock the secret Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow minigame. Really good stuff. Between 2015 and 2016, I was in a huge Pokemon phase. And that's funny, because that was the era where the mainline game's quality was declining for me. 
But regardless, I spent so many hours in Auras because I wanted to get into the competitive Pokemon scene. But my real hype there came from the spin-offs. Rumble World, Shuffle, Picross, which was my introduction to my favorite puzzle game. Pokemon Yellow and Puzzle Challenge being added to the Virtual Console were welcome additions too. But the crowning jewel for me was Super Mystery Dungeon. In my eyes, this game was the revival of the series after that awful game I never played actually, but the fanbase always seemed to dislike it. Also, fun fact, Super Mystery Dungeon depressed me with its ending! Maybe that's why I remember it so fondly. I love this game so much, I even got it as a theme for the 3DS, and I also made this meme that circulated for a while. Is it better than Splurts of Time, Darkness, Sky? No, but it's still pretty good. And while my feelings for the mainline titles were on a decline, I still remember gathering with my friends to discuss team strategies on the 3DS and play some TCG. Those were great times. Okay, it's time I tell you the funniest story that happened to me with the 3DS. So it was the holiday season of 2015. I was still a teenager and I wanted to buy Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. But because of my age, I still didn't own a debit card, and my parents sure as hell weren't going to lend me theirs. So at that time, I relied a lot on the prepaid eShop cards, which were just being a thing in Mexico. So I buy one of 200 pesos, I go home, I scratch the coin in the back, but the fucking coin fucking took the coin away. It was impossible to read. I was fucking devastated. So naturally, the store where I got it wouldn't give me a refund. So as a last resort, I called the Nintendo customer service and they were honestly very nice. I remember they would even play Zelda music while you were waiting. I like that, I like that. So I'm talking with them, I explain them the situation. They ask me for a lot of information like the back of the, the numbers on the back of the 3DS, the, if I could read a few numbers on the prepaid card. And after a while, they were like, oh, okay, turns out you are not aligned. Check your account tomorrow and you will have your 200 pesos in your account. And I'm like, oh, all right, thank you very much. So I go to the eShop the next day, I check my account, and then they didn't give me 200 pesos. They gave me 2,000 pesos! Can you imagine my fucking shock at that? It was a Christmas miracle, someone must have put an extra zero by accident. And that money lasted me until the 3DS stopped pouring new games. I got a lot of virtual console titles, naturally I got the Ace Attorney games I really wanted, and I even wasted some money on that Nintendo Batch Arcade, which was so fucking stupid. But as you can see, I really like that thing. One of the most iconic things that happened to me because of the 3DS was getting into the Fire Emblem series. And I don't think that's something I need to explain. There's a reason I have so many videos about it. The 3DS was when I was properly introduced to a mainline game. And while my feelings towards the series eventually became rough and can make an entirely different shelf stories, there's no denying how attached I am to this series. Awakening was the perfect game to start with. I love it so much, there's a reason it's my most played 3DS game. Then they released... Uh... But in the end, Shadows of Valentia became that spark that started to rekindle my hopes for the franchise. While not everything has been perfect regarding Fire Emblem, I am grateful the 3DS became the gateway for me to get into what will become one of my favorite series of all time. And guess what? That's still nothing compared to what is perhaps the peak of my excitement with this console. I told you this story before a few times. I got into this series during a time where its future seemed uncertain. Nothing. And I mean nothing can describe my sheer excitement when Metroid Samus Returns was announced. This was a moment that changed everything for me. There was a new ray of hope in one of my favorite franchises. And yeah, I already discussed this game in depth. It's not perfect, at all, but I still love it, and I respect it so much because it will become the basis to what is sheer perfection in my eyes, Metroid Dread. I don't know if that event will have also happened in any other console, but I'm so happy the 3DS became the incubator to what will become a pinnacle of gaming for me. After that, what else can I say? The 3DS was a major success, and I'm not saying that from a business standpoint. This thing gave me new games in franchises I already liked, it introduced me to new ones, but more than that, 
It was there for me during a very important part of my life, my teenage years. It was thanks to this thing that I met some of the best friends I could ever ask for. Could you say, when I tell people that video games can be more than just bling bling wahoo, di -di 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 -di, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. It's a shame they had to put the final nail in the coffin, but that doesn't mean we won't always find a way to play those games that aren't accessible anymore. If the company doesn't offer a good alternative, you know the fans will always find one. Anyway, I will forever remember the 3DS as one of the greatest consoles of all time. If you also have some stories you want to share about the console, let me know in the comments. And of course, there's also a Wii U version of this video in the works, so look forward to that. Any kind of support is appreciated. So, thank you so much for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I wish you a wonderful day. Take care everyone.